This is Twit. Here's some bad news. NASA, NASA and SpaceX have misjudged the risks from re-entering space junk. Okay, this is not surprising to me. Whenever <laughs> we're talking about a bunch of junk floating around the Earth, I'm like, that seems bad. It's literally called space junk. Who thought that was going to be good? Well, ideally, you would deorbit them in such a way that they land in a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. In fact, there is an area that is commonly where this stuff lands, but it's it's not a it's not a ah. perfect system. In Imagine March, being a fish living in the space <laughs> junk part of the Pacific Ocean. Sorry, continue. <laughs> in March, a fragment from a battery pack jettisoned from the space station punched a hole in the roof of a Florida home. <coughs> in May, a 90-pound chunk of a SpaceX Dragon uh, fell on the property of a glamping resort in North Carolina. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, a homeowner in a nearby town found a smaller piece of material that also appeared from the same Dragon mission. In April, another 90-pound piece of debris from Dragon landed on a farm in the in Saskatchewan. It killed somebody. It could. The good news yeah. is the Earth is a big place, and there's a lot right. of ocean. But apparently there is less attention being paid than maybe there ought to be. Here's the piece of the... This is not small. The piece of the Dragon spacecraft charred oh. and burned from its reentry, found in a field in Australia in 2022. Yes, that's kind of kind of a big chunk there. Um, yeah. So, safety. This is the the uh, pull quote from Stephen Clark's article in Ars Technica. Safety tends not to be on the front burner. Until it really needs to be on the front burner. <laughs> yeah, safety gets burned up whenever it's re-entering the atmosphere. <laughs> Marlin is going on uh, on junk falling from the sky. Yeah, Marlin uh, Sorge, who is has an interesting job. He's the executive director of Aerospace's Center for Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies. <laughs> it happens enough that there's a center for it. You know, that's a sign. The biggest immediate need now is. It's just to do some more work to really understand this whole process and be in a position to be ready to accommodate new materials, new operational approaches as they happen more quickly. Clearly, that's the direction space flight is going. We launched. Can't we have like. In the yeah, first. Yeah, maybe we should just build a uh, big cover that blots out the sky so we're all protected from oh, space. Well, couldn't there be like, you know, like waste it. management? They send trucks around my neighborhood to pick up the garbage. Couldn't. Elon fly them around. I think the Chinese and... actually have built a space junk garbage collector. Right, exactly. <laughs> that goes around and and picks up this stuff. I don't know what it does with it after it collects it, though. Um, well, there's another thing to that actually. Is that um, there's enough space junk out there that it starts to make space uh, going to space dangerous. dangerous as well. That's right. That's I think why the Chinese are trying to collect it. And uh, keep it out of the way of their uh, satellites. We've launched in the first half of 2024. The United States alone has launched 80 man-made objects into orbit. That's a lot. And it's what goes a, up must come we down. We have a lot of space junk and things in space. There's a lot of space junk. When you're thinking about how little time we've been putting stuff in space in comparison mm. to human existence. Like it's concerning that this is already becoming a problem this early in the, in the yeah. space experiment. Uh, here's the, uh, here's the chart orbital launches in the first half of 2024 from space stats online. We've launched 80 China's launched 29 <laughs> satellites, Russia, eight Japan, three India, two Iran, one or two and North Korea, one that's 125 in the first six months of this year, 125 orbital launches. That's 125 things that eventually will have to come down. Now, most of the time, I think they burn up. Yeah, they burn. But as you know, not all the time. Mm -hmm. um, what happened to that Tesla Elon Musk put in? Oh, that's, they set that out. That's gone. That's, that's, in, that's in a big what? orbit. Where did it go? <laughs> it's, uh, it, gets like, it gets close to Mars. Yeah. yeah. It's going What's to gonna I don't like that. I don't like not, the idea that there's not, a Tesla close to Mars. It's not supposed to land on Mars. I don't know. Listen, I feel like that's going to come back to haunt us. Just a loose Tesla out there in the great unknown. Come on. The alien's got to have something to drive. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, I wonder if SpaceX has a uh, map of some kind showing where the Tesla 
Is there a supercharger oh, it's, up it's there? In, you can you can look up what the orbit is. It's uh it's in the trackers. <laughs> it's in the like celestial object trackers. It's been five years. Um, here's a story from uh, last year. Uh, it's been a let's see five years so it's now six years since the cherry colored sports car was launched into space um, at the time it had it completed about you can go to where is roadster.com to oh, figure this out oh my god of course you can oh my god oh it is in an orbit though you're right it's going to come back eventually current location is 89 million Miles from the Earth moving away at a speed of 32,000 miles per hour. Whoa, pretty quick. That's fast Tesla. Pretty quick. That's moving is away. It actually, uh, is it actually self, it, 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 in this picture, it's actually flying around all by itself. It, it's not encapsulated in anything? No. No, it's just open. No, it's just a loose Tesla out <laughs> yeah. of space. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's full self-driving. Uh, oh, they, it's it's self-driving, all right. It had a, uh, of course, Elon's sense of humor. It had a, a battery playing David Bowie's Space Oddity uh, over and over and over again to the spaceman in the Tesla. Uh, if the battery is still working, 636,000 times. And that's one ear in one ear. And then in the other ear, is there life on Mars? 857,000 times. Uh, Fuel economy, 25,640.2 miles per gallon. <laughs> wow. Uh, can, is, can, he, can he include that in the stats, like when he averages out his fuel economy? Really mileage. Yeah. The entire well, I'm certain. Yeah. This is a great website. This is so No great. wonder he claims my car has more range than it really has. Where is Roadster.com? And here is the, uh, lo you can actually, the location plot. There it is. You're right. Oh, yeah, it's an Alan, animation. It is, it is, an, it is an, an orbit. Um, yeah. Yeah. In orbit around Mars or around... Uh, the sun. That's in between both. And, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like a, it's like its own planet. Its own, its, own, its own orbit, yeah. It crosses uh, Mars uh, I wonder what temperature orbit. it is at this point. Well, let me see if they say that. <laughs> they have any information yeah, about its current... Well, it's very cold, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to guess very cold. Very cold. Mm. <laughs> All right. Because Teslas do have, uh, you know, you can get the Tesla app and figure the temperature of your car. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, like 400 degrees. It has, uh, it has <laughs> completed 4.2 orbits around the sun. So it is, in fact, and orbiting more slowly. Could you put air. a generate? Could you put so that the orbit actually generates power to keep the battery going? No. It's a solar no. panel. Yeah, but you could have panels, sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's no friction. So space, space station gets its power. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.